Now, we have a uh, special guest on the line. We have Paul Harris here talking movies, of course, as we do each Tuesday night. And if there's one thing we love, it's supporting local, uh, well, local talent. And in the movie business, there's a guy named Glenn Triggs who made contact with us many years ago, Phil. Yes. When he was just a little toddler. It was a horror movie. Could, could barely walk and was just holding a camera for the first ever time. And he, yeah. had, and he had knocked out a film. And, uh, and I've just shown you, Phil, the trailer for his new movie, uh-huh. The Comet Kid. Yeah. Uh, and you'll have to agree that's a very impressive looking trailer. Yes, absolutely. Well, Glenn Triggs joins us now, all grown up. Hello, Glenn. Hi, guys. How are you going? Yeah, Hi. Oh, great to talk to you again. But look, I just saw the trailer of the Comic Kids, and firstly, I want to do something that a lot of people would overlook. Congratulate you on the music score. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah, um, Heath Brown did the music for the film. He also did the music for another movie I made a few years ago called 41. And, um, yeah, he's done an amazing job. The soundtrack's fantastic. It, um, it makes the film even better, uh, which is great. So, yeah. Gee, I'd love you to win an Oscar for that score next year, mate. It's, it's possible. It could happen. It could happen. <laughs> but, uh, no, he's put in a lot of work, and, um, yeah, that turned out really good. So, um, yeah, it's great. So we've got, uh, the movie, we just had our premiere very recently, um, which was on Saturday at the Lido Cinemas in Hawthorne. And we had a sold-out screening, and, uh, yeah, it went fantastic. We had a really good response from the audience. Everyone was clapping and cheering and laughing uh, throughout the whole film, which was really cool. And um, we started our cinema sessions now, so it's in uh, cinemas around Victoria and, and one in Queensland at the moment. Excellent. Now, Glenn, how do you go, uh, go from movie to movie as technology changes? Are you finding it easier to get better effects and that sort of thing? Uh, yes and no. I'm not a huge fan of computer effects in movies. I like, um, I built a lot of miniatures for the Comet Kids because I like the look of real tangible objects in movies. Um, so with uh, technology, it definitely is easier to do things, um, but not necessarily the better way to do things. Um, but yeah, like I spent about, I think, uh, nine months building that little sort of a mountain, uh, like log crossing in the film where the kids have to cross this log between two mountains. And um, I spent, yeah, about nine months uh, make, making a paper mache uh, miniature that's in the film. And it looks quite good. It looks real, if anything. Um, it doesn't look computerised, which is, which is good, I think. Glenn, when I was a little kid, I saw uh, the original King Kong on TV and just loved it, and I was amazed. That was made back in 1933, and the King That's Kong right. monster was built with armatures. It had hair, uh, and it all had to be animated using stop-motion animation. Now, today, in the latest versions, it's all CGI. I reckon a lot of the magic has gone out of it. I agree. I totally agree. I think um, with computer effects, your brain sort of knows that it's not real yeah. um, at all, and therefore... It's hard to connect with things. I think it has it has got better. Like the new Planet of the Apes movie was actually quite amazing. Yep. I thought, like um, visually, but yeah, you're right. Like I think, um, like I, I love like George Powell's The Time Machine. It's one of my favourite movies of all time. And um, there's heaps of uh, stop motion in that film, and that won an Oscar as well. I'm pretty sure. I suppose you spend a lot of time tearing your hair out financing these projects, do you? Uh, it can be. Yeah, you, so I think um, along the way we we learn ways to make uh, something for nothing a lot of the time, yes. and figure out figure out ways to you know utilize locations and uh, and mm-hmm. costumes and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, we we had to we made a film for the comic kids. It was uh, filmed all in Victoria, and we tried to make it look like the 1950s in America. And um, yeah, we had a bunch of kids in the film, which are great, and a dog. And yeah, it was quite a difficult process and a three year project. Mm. But um, it's, all, it's all turned out really well, which is great. Glenn, I think there's a big appetite for these kind of stories. If you look out in the marketplace at the moment, in the cinemas, we had Stephen King's It, the remake, and also uh, Stranger Things on television. You know, a bun- bunch of kids going out, uh, you know, misfits and that, and having a great time and all sorts of adventures. And why don't we do more of that in Australia? Oh, I totally agree. This is why we sort of made this film. I love movies like The Goonies and Stand By Me and Fly the Navigator, all these sort of like uh, family adventure movies that came out in the late 80s and then early 90s. And, um, yeah, there's, there's definitely an, a new appetite for that. I think Stranger Things kicked that off. And it was actually funny because a lot of people thought we tried to copy Stranger Things with the comic kids, but um, we had no idea they were making that show when we made our film. And it just so happened to be that uh, they, they came out somewhat similar in, to some degree. But um, yeah, yeah. the comic kids is definitely it's more of a, it's, it's for all ages. I think Stranger Things has got, I think it's a, I'm not sure what it's rated actually, but I think it's, you know, 15 year olds and above. But our, our film's for the younger audience. It's, it's, it's taken you three years to get this off the ground, but your mother made other features. Are you like the juggler? You've always got a few balls in the air working on projects simultaneously, hoping one will get over the line? Uh, not necessarily. I usually make a film, finish it, and then I move on to the next one. I don't usually overlap. 
Um, right. But at the moment, I've got three scripts that are um, in the works. So um, I'm not necessarily going to direct all of those projects, but um, I do enjoy writing. So and I'm going to take about it. I'm going to take a year off after the Comet Kids and just uh, I think mm. write some scripts, which will be fun. Okay. Did you and Glenn, in fact, write the Comet Kids? I did, yeah. I wrote it with my wife. My wife, um, Bethia, she came up with the idea. She thought it'd be great because we just did a horror movie oh, um, yeah. called Apocalyptic, which actually just came out in the States um, a few weeks ago. And um, we thought it'd be good to do a family adventure film. And Bethia mm. thought, um, why don't we do a film about a bunch of kids that have to go on an adventure somewhere? And yeah. So we just uh, we spent a lot of time discussing what the adventure could be. And um, one of the early thoughts was the Comet Kids is a really good name for a movie. So we sort of somewhat based the movie just around the name. We just uh, tried to make something worthy of that title, I guess. Glenn, who came up with the idea of casting, of all people, Marty Roan? Uh, well, that, yeah, well, Marty Roan uh, plays the villain in our film, and I, we had auditions, and he was, I think, one of the ten gentlemen that came in to play um, for the bad guy. And as soon as he, like, literally the first word he said, I knew he was perfect. It was just, um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually know, like, everyone, like, my parents knew very much who he was, <laughs> I didn't know who he was at the time necessarily, oh. but I've learned that since. And, um, yeah, he's become a great friend. Marty's fantastic. He's very uh, um, engaged with the film, and, uh, yeah, he does a really good performance. And uh, I just I basically cast him just on his acting skills okay. without really knowing anything much too about him, actually. And Glenn Triggs, I, in the trailer, I spotted Reg Gorman. Yeah, Reg Gorman as well. He was there at our premiere the other night. He came down from Sydney for that. Yeah. Um, once again, he was, I think I found him online, um, somewhere and read his bio and got to meet him and once again immediately could see his acting skills. He just could very easily act because he's been doing it for such a long time. And so, uh, um, and an, yeah, another, another Glenn who was, I noticed in the trailer as well is Tyriel Moira, who people might remember as Martin D'Astasio, the uh, crusty journo from Frontline. <laughs> yeah. And the lawyer yeah, in the right, castle. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, Dennis Denuda from the castle. Um, yeah, so he, he came down to Sydney for the film and um, he plays the father in the movie. And um, yeah, he gets re- he, once again, he's a, he's a great actor as well. He's played a lot of different roles. He was actually in the remake of King Kong um, oh, yeah. that Peter Jackson did. He played, a, I think, the fruit seller in a scene that is correct. Um, near, near mm. the start of the movie. So um, yeah, we, we got some really good actors and the kids in the, in the film are uh, quite fantastic, actually. We spent a lot of time... Uh, looking at thousands of kids and narrowed them down to our five that we've got as the comic kids. Yeah. And uh, um, there's also a dog in the film, which is my dad's uh, dog, and uh, uh, he does uh, a great performance as well. His yeah. name's Hamish. Uh, Glenn, I see a lot of exterior shots. Was the weather kind to you? It actually was. We got really lucky. The weather was um, perfect for every day we shot, and the days that it did rain, we were down in the mines in Wonthaggy. So um, we were shooting some scenes down there, and it, so the days that we didn't want it to rain... Uh, it, yeah, it, it it was fine. We we had a, a very um, good luck, and we shot all over Victoria. We shot um, in Macedon, in uh, Warburton, um, just yeah, all like every possible place you could think of. Um, also in Beechworth, all that street scenes were shot in Beechworth, and we had the uh, the old Cranks car clubs that uh, uh, helped us with all their um, vintage cars for those for those wide shots. I, I reckon so, um, I reckon all your costs must have come from transportation, getting these actors down from Sydney, going all around Victoria. <laughs> and if you're shooting in the one faggy coal mines, that means it's an underground movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true, true, that's true. <laughs> we um we were down there I think for two days and there's a yeah, there's a big sequence in the film where the kids go through the mines. Fantastic. Yeah. And um and one of them falls into like this uh this water well I guess and gets trapped. And so we shot that in my uh, at my uncle's house in his pool in his backyard. Oh. And hopefully you won't be able to tell the difference between the locations good. when you see the movie. It just looks like one one spot, which is good. So yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of things to uh, to work out, a lot of uh, problems to solve. But um, yeah, we got we got through it. We it, yeah, I think we shot for twenty four days in total, yeah. um, which isn't really too much considering the sort of film that we made. So I think we uh, we did a yeah. I think everyone came together and did a great job. Okay, you talk about the vintage cars. What era is the movie setting, Glenn? It's set in 1958, and it's also set in present day. Oh. So um, I'll just give you a quick rundown of the story. It's just about um, uh, I'll give you the synopsis. I should say, uh, in order to protect his father's discovery, Lucas and his five friends go on the adventure of a lifetime to find a piece of a passing comet that lands near their hometown in the 1950s. So. Um, Yes, yeah, so it's set in present day, and it's about a man that remembers when he was younger, um, and this comet came past, and a bit broke off, and they all went to try to find it. But at the same time, this comet comes back every 74 years, so the story sort of uh, tied together by this comet um, coming and going, I guess. And so you've got uh, Reg Gorman, who plays the, uh, the elderly uh, Lucas character, the lead, 
and also uh, Xavier West, who plays the younger version of him. And, uh, they're, yeah, they're both tied together by this passing comet. Glenn, that comes where, around. Glenn where can listeners uh, see the film? Uh, you can see it at uh, a few cinemas around. Um, the best way to look at all the cinemas, we've got a website up called thecometkids.com. Yep. And um, all our cinema sessions are on there. Uh, the main ones we've got uh, running at the moment is Metro Cinema in Baronia, uh, run by Tom Scouton, which I think you gentlemen uh, might have uh, known before. He runs uh, Metro Cinema yes. in Baronia. We, we, had him in, in we had him in here not all that long ago, yes. Yeah, I listened to that, actually. Yeah, he... Um, he was, uh, he's put the movie on. He's helped us uh, heaps, actually, with the film. He's uh, helped test out uh, surround sound uh, methods and all that sort of stuff. And we've, I think we've tested the movie about four or five times there before we, uh, we finalised it. So, yeah, it's at Metro Cinema Baron. It's also at the Lido Cinema this weekend um, at uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. And also the Cameo Cinema in uh, Belgrave. Um, which is on at 10 o'clock as well, both Saturday and Sunday. So having, so, um, having, having raised the money, made the film, are you now going around town sticking up posters on lampposts and uh, doing all the old-fashioned pr promotion to get people into the see the show? Yeah, no, it's not really with posters. We're, um, a lot of it's online um, uh, at the moment. We've, we've done things. We've done a fair bit of uh, radio like, like this, I guess. Um, also, uh, the Herald Sun's been kind to us as well with a few little stories. Um, a few different sort of film magazines and a lot of online stuff. We find that there's a lot of, um, I think the, I guess it's the future of advertising really with, uh, with all the Facebook and Instagram and all that sort of, uh, crazy stuff that's around at the moment. So, um, yeah, we've put a lot of time into online. It, it seems to be doing okay for us, which is good. Now, we, we do have to fly, but casting our minds back, Glenn, do you remember what the first movie was you had just done when... We, we must have been talking about movies on the show and you called us one night here. Yes, and, and yes I think I actually... I sent an email through from memory and it was a movie called Luna. And I remember I came in and I spoke with um, you guys on in the studio. I was actually in the studio there and um, I was looking for, I think, a 19... Uh, that was another movie set in the 1950s. And we're trying to find a 1950s house. And I think callers oh, rang up yes. uh, offering some help to try to find a, a particular house. That's right. Um, so, yeah, that was called Luna. That was a short film that we shot on 16mm film. And that was uh, quite, a, quite a learning curve for me at the time. But, um, yeah, it was Luna. And then I think, I'm, I think it's, uh, from memory, I sent a copy of another movie into you guys, um, which I think you might have seen Phil called The Follow. I'm not sure if you remember that movie, but that was like a little sci-fi film that... Yeah, um, was around two thousand and four from memory. So. Oh yeah, now somewhere I read is it true the comic edge runs ninety two minutes, um, and yes. if so, how clever of you to prune it back to ninety two minutes? A lot of Australian filmmakers make the mistake of uh, shooting movies that finally run two and a half, three hours, and it's very hard for them to get any uh, showing in a commercial cinema. So. Uh, a pat on the back for you, if that's a fact, Glenn. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think when I first wrote the script, I was convinced the movie was going to be about an hour and 45 minutes, which would have been my longest film. Yes. But uh, when we made it, it just naturally formed to 92 minutes. And I think a lot of cinemas were pleased by that because it's great for their uh, kid audiences, like the children that come in to see films. Oh, yeah. Um, we've, had, we've had the best response from like 7 to 13-year-olds that seem to love it. So, um yeah, an hour and a half of them is a perfect yeah, uh, uh, for a film. Yeah, leave them wanting more. That's the way to go. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, good on you, Glenn. Lovely to chat to you as always. We, uh, I look forward to seeing the film and uh, all the best for it. I'll put a link on our Facebook page to the Comic Kids website uh, so people who are interested in chasing it up and having a look at it can do so. That'd be great. Thank you so much for all your support. Always, guys, it's been great. And I'll just say a quick hello to my uh, grandma, who I know is listening, Jean. She's a big fan of the show, so hello, hello to her again. And, um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. It's been great. Well, well, my, Always a pleasure. My assurance, Glenn, is uh, you're welcome on the show for the next 25 years. That's Philip <laughs> speaking. So okay, mate? That's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Good on you, Glenn. Glenn Triggs, the uh, uh, from dark epic films. It's sort of yeah. a bit of a breakaway to do the comic kids because yes. a lot of his other stuff has had a darker theme. That's to right, it. yeah. But uh, I'm quite excited about it. Looking at that trailer, a, a quality piece of work, which is just great. Yeah, the trailer was so classy. It was lovely. Loved it.